Hey folks, I hope you're sitting down because you're about to be blown away by the power of modern amateur astronomy. You have discovered your own planetary nebula which bears your name. It's it's unbelievable, honestly. In this video, me and my nerd friends It's basically the height of you. are going to reveal This is right in there. Five telescopes They are delightful. that have helped bring about Holy <laughs> This amateur astronomy revolution. Whatever scope you have, there's got to be a killer scope. My scope is... Wow. The music for this Astro Biscuit mission is brought to you by His Majesty King Rechtenstein. Details of all the Astro gear used in this video on my website, link below. You can support the channel by making a donation, becoming a patron, or by one of our high quality prints. All right, here we go. Despite being about all the very, very latest changes that are happening, this old girl has a part to play. Long old telescope, F10. There's no getting away from it. This 300 year old doublet lens design is optically amazing. Holy camoly. Right now, I'm looking at a moon called Ganymede passing in front of Jupiter. Wow. For centuries, this kind of view belonged only to the very rich, but not anymore. Coming in at number five, our first killer scope costs under a hundred pounds. Oh, it's just so sharp. And if you're looking at the planets or the moon, this design is perfect link below but if you want to see faint galaxies you need something a bit fatter like this because by making it fatter you let more light in problem though with these short fat refractors is that the glass bends the blue light a bit more than the red light and you get color fringing so really if you want to improve this telescope design by making it fatter you've also got to make it longer yeah like this oh, and if you think this one's a bit awkward the next killer scope is even fatter holy moly holy mo <laughs> bloody hell Arnis scope is four times faster than my 100 quid scope, shows four times the detail, and gathers 16 times more photons. It looks so good, doesn't it? Yeah. At least it would if it weren't for the, what I hope is now becoming obvious, flaw in this design. Since it's been, it was built, um, I've never used it. I can't pick it up. These telescopes are so long, but a decently fat one requires a four-storey observatory and lots of servants. Which is why our next killer scope is a completely different design. The first trials were conducted on a bunch of unsuspecting hippies in 1970s San Francisco. I'm sort of imagining, you know, San Francisco, 70s, there's the whole hippie thing going on. Right. And then you've got John Dobson, building giant telescopes and people going out and getting stoned and looking at galaxies and stuff with these enormous telescopes. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, is that kind of what it was like? I have... It actually was kind of like that. Ex-Hindu monk John Dobson was on a mission to show the world the beauty of God's heavenly creation. And he was going to do it with giant telescope mirrors that he'd ground out himself using beach sand and plate glass. He started what was called San Francisco Street Side Astronomers. And he would take one of his big scopes out to a busy corner and, and he would just invite people to step up to get people interested in the stuff that's in the sky. The astronomy establishment thought he was a hippie and snubbed his hodgepodge design. And yet, his easy to use rocker box made out of wood and cardboard tubes and slings, was able to hold huge Newtonian mirrors, 
which for the first time gathered enough photons to allow amateurs to see the spiral arms of galaxies tens of millions of light years away. Although some of the locals claim to see such things without needing a telescope. So I don't know how many hundreds or thousands of people he awoke an interest in astronomy for, but now it's an institution, it's an icon. The Dobsonian telescope is so, is so widespread. And Dobson himself became a kind of nerdy rock star. Art was keen to meet him. So I took him to his mirror grinding class. And there were about 25 people there. And he asked a simple question. Are you making a parabolic or a circular mirror? The guy said, parabolic. And Dobson shouted, no, 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 no. And every single person literally flew out of their seats with fear. <laughs> he was terrifying. We're looking at the moon. Come see the moon. Yeah, come see the moon. John Dobson continued his mission right till the end of his life. Oh, that's awesome. And his cheap and effortless rocker box, which can point enormous Newtonian telescopes deep into space, lives on and bears his name, the Dobsonian. What a fella, and Dobbs are absolutely killer scopes. Nothing can beat them for looking deep into space. More details on my website, link below. Worth noting though, Dobbs have an obstruction right in front of the primary mirror, which makes them not optically as good as refractors. The reason they win is because they're bigger. So little Dobbs ain't no good. Thing is, kids like me and 17-year-old Helena from Scotland find Dobbs a bit, well, big. My 10-inch Dobbs, the height of me. And uh, this is my 10-inch Newt. It's basically the height of you. I mean, if there's a hint of a cloud in the sky, I'm like, I just can't be bothered. I think going out portability is a big factor to consider. Our next scope is more portable than anything John Dobson could have imagined. Picture the scene. You're flying to Greece, having been told you're not allowed to swap one of your daughters for your favourite telescope. Shocking, I know, but it happened to me. I am staying in the upstairs flat here, and I can see the constellation of Scorpius. It's an amazing cloud of gas really close to us, and I've been desperate to get it. You could only see this constellation somewhere as far south as Greece. And as we almost never go abroad on our holidays, my only hope of getting it is with this camera, lens and earth derotation device. If I set my kit up on the boundary wall, not only can I see Scorpius, I can also see the North Star just about. And so I can play the line and I'm all set up. And this is it. My bucket list. This is right in there. But can a simple camera lens reveal one of the most amazing stellar nurseries in our neck of the Milky Way? Good, in it. In fact, I'm so pleased with it, I'm actually selling prints. This is the power of astrophotography, folks. At number three, the killer portable telescope is the Samyang 135. If you've got a camera and an Earth derotation device, you can do the same thing, and you can find out how on my website. And this lens is the third most popular telescope for shooting the stars. But by going bigger, we can do better. Next, the killer scope for astrophotography. In the last two years, the level of amateur astrophotography has gone from amazing to blooming extraordinarily gobsmacking. In my humble opinion, the rise of astrophotography comes from mobile phone cameras. Hear me out. Basically, millions of dollars have been spent making tiny little CMOS sensors that work in mobile phones. 
In the last couple of years, the quantum efficiency of these tiny sensors with their tiny pixels has gotten stupidly good. And now the same technology and same tiny pixels are being used in astro cameras and DSLRs. But in order to get a little pixel sensor working, you need a scope that is super sharp. So our killer scope for astrophotography is going to be one that is super sharp. It's taken a year, but I managed to track down an optical genius who can tell me unbiasedly what telescope is sharpest. Hello, Rory. Hello. Welcome. Come on. Yes. Hi. Uh, very nice to meet you. Thank you for seeing me. When not designing optical systems, Ez Reed bench tests commercial backyard telescopes. So I'm pretty sure he's the right man for the job. Are you one of the best optics experts in the country? Uh, no, probably not. No, I, I can't say yes. Depends what aspect it is. Oh dear, folks. Before carrying on, we really need to determine if he is an optical genius or not. I want to check that you're actually as good as they say you are. I will believe in Ez's optical geniusnessness. What do you think this is? It looks like a filter. If he can identify this optical relic from the 1950s. Oh dear. Let's have a look. I'm only guessing. Oh, it's a, a very steep Schmidt plate indeed. Wow. Cheers. Cheers. I spent five years trying to figure out what the best telescope for astrophotography is. And now, finally, I'm about to find out. I mean, really, refractors now are getting so good, even compared with 10 years ago, a lot of maturing companies. Modern refractors have managed to get shorter and sharper than their grandparents by beating colour fringing with magic crystals. Fluorite is wonderful stuff. Unlike glass, Fluorite bends the red and the green and the blue light by almost the same amount. It used to be a really difficult material to get hold of, very expensive. Once you had to search for large fluorite crystals deep in Mongolian mines. Now it's grown in a lab and used to make short refractors which are supersonically sharp. They are delightful. But annoyingly, this design doesn't scale up. So in general, the bigger the aperture, the more these aberrations yes. become a problem. Yes, that's right. Absolutely right. Unfortunately, the faster these scopes get, the harder the aberrations are to control. Up till, I suppose, about 100 mil, things are quite easy. And then 120 mil, mm, of course, start thinking a bit. But 150 mil, yeah, you've got to be much more sophisticated in your design approach. Everything's got to be better. And making every part of a telescope more accurate costs money. The larger aperture you get, the expense goes up yeah, very yeah, quickly. Very quickly, above six inches or so, yeah, going up rapidly. An eight inch fat fluorite scope costs about £30,000. And the best value six incher is five grand. Too much for me. Thing is, these little fracks are so good optically that I'm, I'm going to have to award them a prize of killer scope best killer scope for wide field astrophotography. They're sharp as anything. I've listed all the small killer refractors Ez recommends, as well as larger scopes that Ez really likes on my website. But the number one spot has to go to a telescope that is more zoomed in. One that can show us things no one else has ever seen before. Whoa. Hey, Liafine. 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 <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm doing fine. So let's just get this straight, right? You have discovered your own planetary nebula, which bears your name. I never expected it to be possible for me to discover a new nebula. I thought maybe if I'm lucky, I could get an asteroid or something. But the whole nebula, which now carries my name, it's, it's unbelievable, honestly. I don't know. <laughs> I really... Never in my entire life I could have imagined that. And it was just pure luck. I wasn't even looking for it. 3,000 light years away, a cluster of young stars is lighting up a vast cloud of gas. Investigating strange filaments, Leofine pointed a camera at it for 20 nights on the trot. 
resulting in what I suspect is the deepest picture ever taken of this region of space. And in the vast floating cloud of dust, a red glow, hitherto unseen. It just popped out and one of my friends said, hey, that's, that one is looking weird, that structure, it could be, it could be something else. So we looked into it and there was a white dwarf in the middle, oxygen, hydrogen. So it was pretty easy to confirm that it's a planetary nebula. So we submitted it and here we go. Absolutely amazing. You're able to discover things that the professional astronomers, is, they have, they've missed it and you're doing it. Presumably, uh, you've been doing this since you were a kid, yeah? I started doing astrophotography two and a half years ago. Two and a half years ago? Yeah. Blimey. I mean, uh, presumably you live somewhere incredibly dark. Not too dark. It's still in Border 4. I'm living on the outside of a city. Blimey. It's not like a proper dark site, is it? So I'm thinking that whatever scope you have, there's got to be a killer scope. I mean, along with your skill, of course. So what is your scope? My scope is an 8-inch Newtonian telescope. Wow. Leofine's carbon fibre 8-inch Newtonian is awesome. But my online club, Big Amateur Telescope, which you can join if you want, has discovered that cheaper 8-inch Newtonians are just as sharp. So here we have it, folks. What I think is the WOW scope, the best telescope for astrophotography, which will allow you to discover stuff no one else has ever seen before. Anyway, this is 500 quid. It's made by GSO Optical. It's not carbon fiber. It actually, it's got a quite heavy steel tube, uh, but value for money, amazing. And optically, it should do a very similar job to Leofine's, uh, as long as you get a really good coma corrector. Anyway, there we go. 8-inch Newtonian, the wow scope for astrophotography. Annoyingly, these scopes have got different badges depending on what country you're in. So it's a good idea to check out my website to make sure you're buying the right one. And last but not least, the outro, which I'm going to try and do in one breath. Massive thanks to my patrons, list appearing here. If you become a patron, you get access to hidden channels on my Discord server, as well as access to some tutorial videos. Big thanks to the admins and mods on my Discord server, as well as all the nerds who answer noob questions in the Ask a Nerd channel. Massive thanks to Richtenstein for the amazing tunes. If you need your video mixing, get in touch. His album link is below. Thank you, everyone who's used my affiliate links on my website and prints. Oh. I meant to say, please support the channel by buying a print. This is Ro off Yuki. I think it looks gorgeous. Link below. Hopefully I'll have some more prints ready to sell soon. Oh, and of course, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Helena, Ayers, Arnie and Art and Leofine for being in the video. Oh. I'm currently waiting for the weather to clear so I can film the final scene in my ultimate travel scope video. It is gonna be amazing with revolutionary design features popped on a modified EQM35 mount tuned by Dave from Dark Frame Optics. And thank you to everyone who donated to this ultimate travel scope. I'm hoping, but I can't promise, that some of your names will be engraved on the scope. Of course, I'm not gonna have any money left to travel anywhere. But anyway, I will have an amazing scope. And if I don't get that video done before Christmas, have a very good Christmas. Doodle Pip. <laughs>